Good afternoon, it's Carolyn here from Waiheke Island down under in New Zealand. It's winter now and you would be expecting roses to be losing some of their leaves but it's really mild where I live so this one is certainly taking its time. Um, it's got a gorgeous flower. Here it is up here. Oh, I knocked a bud off. And it has a gorgeous smell as well. If I can find the name of it when I get home, I'll put it up on the screen. And what's in my bowl here is some rose hips. I thought, why don't I collect some of these rose hips while I'm here? Here's another one. Look how big it is. So this one here will be from a summer flower and it's fertilized. It's one that's fertilized. If the bees haven't fertilized it, you won't see it. This is quite a big one. These are quite big hips. On some of the smaller roses, you'll see small hips. Here's one that's not quite as advanced. It's still green. It's about half the size. And then down further, you'll see one here, an old flower. If that's fertilized, which it probably is, because most of these seem to be. There's a lot of bees around here. Then it, it will get bigger and bigger until it ends up big like that uh, big yellow one up here, which is the size that I'm going to be picking it at. If you're wondering why is she even bothering to pick those, it's because they contain a huge amount of vitamin C. This one rose hip would have as much vitamin C as 50 oranges. And what I can do is dry these out and make a cup of tea and get my vitamin C that way. It's pretty easy, isn't it? I think that's much better for me than eating 50 oranges. I'm going to pick these off and I just or, uh, I'll see if it'll pick off. It does, okay. So I've just picked it off and it's going into my colander with the other ones. And I'll do a video about how I get the seeds out of that because there'll be a lot of seeds in here. Some people make a jam, some people make a paste, some people make a tea, some people make a tincture. I'll get that real big one up there. And one thing you might not know is that during World War II in England, when they had a lot of trouble getting resources from outside of England. They did a lot of studies on these. So when I say they, I'm talking about the government. They did a lot of studies on these. Would need it. They did a lot of study on all sorts of herbs and plants. They did a big stock take of the entire country. I'll do more about that because I find it really interesting. But I'll just talk about this one today. Oh, there would be one right in the centre, a massive one. And this is quite prickly. Ow, it's got me. Um, I got it. Oh, there's some up there too, huge ones. Yeah, I'll have to get those. I'll do more videos on the, the things that they used during that time because I think it's really interesting um, to see what people do when things are scarce. And this has such nice blooms. They open out and get fuller and fuller and it does have quite a nice smell. Um, in some countries you will get roses that are wild that you can collect from um, not so much here in New Zealand I did, um, sometimes you see them growing on the sides of the road they're sort of escapees from old cottages and um, when they would have been collecting more rose hips but the, the entire plant is edible the entire rose is edible from the roots right to the flowers and all rose hips are edible so don't be concerned as long as you can identify a rose then that's the first thing that you can do come out and collect them some people say that you're supposed to collect them after the first frost. We don't really get a frost here on Waiheke. Well, this place wouldn't have felt a frost where these are. Uh, look, wow, look at that little bee making a rose up. Hopefully this video has inspired you to get out there and collect your own rose hips and make sure that you get your vitamin C.